Regina George is gay. The star who plays the iconic Mean Girls character spilled the beans with us as we sat down to talk about the reboot of the movie. I think it's cool to see like the like it hot girl be this like potentially like gay character, or, like potentially like lesbian character. That's really exciting. A lot has changed since the movie came out in 2004, like social media. I talk with Tina Fey about how she updated the narrative to meet a new generation where it's at. Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm your host, Tracy E. Gilchrist, VP and executive producer of entertainment for the Advocate Channel. We are all things Mean Girls today. I'm sitting down with the stars and diving into this film that has captivated our attention for two decades. We're starting off with Outstar Renee Rapp and Christopher Briney, who play Regina and Aaron, and also that juicy nugget that Rapp's Regina is queer. Regina is a queer icon, and you know, especially with you walking in her shoes since 2018. And would you talk a little bit about what it means to you to be a part of this kind of queer legacy that goes back to 2004? And also, um, given her bullying of uh, Janice, and you know, I wonder where does she fall on the queer spectrum? I mean, I think a couple things. I think first of all. There's like obviously like a classic like trope of like, oh, if someone is like bullying someone for being gay, then they're closeted and gay themselves. And I don't think that that always applies. I think that like just like homophobia runs like rampant. However, I will say like for me in this case scenario, that is that. Um, and yeah. that's like what it is in my head. Um, and I, I think it's cool to see, um, even for myself, like, I think it's cool to see, like, the, like, the it hot girl be this, like, potentially, like, gay character, or, like, potentially, like, lesbian character. That's really exciting. And it's also, like, not, you know, outwardly said or, like, done in any sort of way. It just kind of, like, is gay to me. So it's gay. Um, <laughs> You know, um, yeah, and it's really lovely. It's really cool. I think that there's also like a huge part of it that's like, uh, it, I mean, it's just, it's it's so loaded. Like at the end of the day, like the like the it hot girl is still like a, a blonde cis white girl. So like, I, I would say that, you know, there's obviously nuance to that. However, I do think it is a, a win in, in a way that like, I'm able to be her. You heard it here on Equal Entertainment. Regina George, queen of the plastics, is part of the LGBTQ plus community. As these characters have adapted to reflect more of the world we live in, other elements have also shifted. I sat down with Tina Fey, who spoke about centering the queer kids and changing times. I wanted to ask you a little bit about, uh, you know, this has had a couple of iterations over time. And, you know, you've had to update some of the references and the way that we speak. Would you talk about uh, creating the screenplay uh, for 2024 audiences while also really paying homage to those of us who saw it in the theater back in the day? Sure. Yeah, we tried to, to you know, the, the, the millennial audience especially seems to feel real ownership of the original film and we wanted to respect uh, their love of the original but still update it. Um, and it is interesting to write, you know, these, the way we spoke to each other in like the 90s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, we're like, we look back now and we're like, wow, it's very harsh, you know? And so now I think people are a little more aware of how they're supposed to speak to each other, but they still find ways to um, create injury, right? And so that yeah. was some of like the massaging of the Regina Janice backstory is like, Regina would know that she didn't want to appear to be a homophobe, but she also makes some mistakes and kind of like does some, you know, queer baiting or whatever, like I'm about to get the term, when she's like, you know, oh, I'm, I'm like using my friend to like get the attention of this boy. Like people still make mistakes, but yes. they also mm -hmm. like, you know, so I was just trying to walk the line of like, and also you're talking about people who are very young um, of, of what is a better reflection of how people 
act today, but also it's not like people are that much, we're not really behaving that much better. We're just like people right. kind of are know where to hide their, their poison better. The beauty of this movie is that it has remained true to its original form, but also reflects a new generation. Out actors Jaquel Spivey and Ali Cravalho share their thoughts on playing characters that represent who they are. First, congratulations. And I love Thank that you. this iteration of Mean Girls is told through the lens of the queer kids. And would you talk a little bit about what that means to you? It means a lot. It means a lot, especially to be a queer character uh, a queer teenager in my body and um, to also do it with Ali E. I mean, I just think right off the bat, you see this is not the Mean Girls you're probably familiar with. And that's a beautiful thing because it's, it's ours, but it's also the essence of the original. It's the essence of the Broadway show, um, but with another twist. And I hope that there are queer kids, queer kids of color, queer people in general, um, and just, people who are inspired by our performances, the story we're telling, um, and I hope they feel represented, if, especially if they haven't before. Yeah, well, I, I think they, I mean, I felt represented, so I, I loved it. Uh, and I wanna go to you and, and Gallery and ask you a little bit about Katie, who's got this kind of uh, timeless issue of wanting to be a good friend, wanting to have this crush and <laughs> also have some social cachet. Uh, which is a little bit tough to juggle. Would you talk about, especially with social media, which wasn't around 20 years ago. So would you talk a little bit about playing that kind of timeless problem that she has? Yeah, yeah, I really related to Katie. I've always related to her because she has that problem of wanting to fit in and not knowing how. And when she does fit in, she suddenly like loses herself and realizes, oh, maybe I, maybe I was okay to begin with and shouldn't have tried to fit in in the first place. Um, but I think it comes from that sort of deep desire that we all have to sort of feel seen and feel known and loved. And she's in this new social situation where she doesn't know how to get that. She doesn't know that Janice and Damien can give that to her. She thinks that the Queen Bee must give that validation and <laughs> appreciation to her. So um, I love that it's a, it's a, it's a fable of, um, rising to the top and then falling down and realizing that maybe you were you you as you were at the beginning um was was perfect to begin with <laughs> yeah yeah it's a little bit of uh dorothy <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> yeah uh, and then ali i i want to ask you the way you know janice is kind of a queer canon at this point. And of course, she's always been this strong, powerful character as Lizzie Kaplan portrayed her. But now she's very openly out and proud. And uh, despite having been bullied by Regina, and would you talk about what it means to you to walk in those shoes and carry that character forward? Yeah, it feels great. Um, you know, this character is from our 04 film, like the the Lebanese lesbian, like it was a funny play on words, but lesbian was meant to be a little derogatory. And now like power les loud and proud, like that just means <laughs> I'm a fire lesbian, what? Like, <laughs> I think it's really fun to reclaim these words and reclaim the character for this generation, right? Like there's, we pay such respect to Lizzie Kaplan, to um, Barrett Weed who played Janice on Broadway as well. Like there are so, many different um, inspirations for our characters. And I think one of the hardest things that all of us kind of had was <sighs> letting it go, right? These are gonna be ours. And as scary as that is, Tina Fey, as well as Samantha Jane and Arturo Perez, like they encouraged us to make these characters all our own. And yeah, she gay. And that's a wrap for us on this episode of Equal Entertainment. I'm your host, Tracy E. Gilchrist. Make sure you check out Mean Girls in Theaters and Wear Pink. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.